All right, let's talk about live paint. I love this feature in Illustrator. So one of the things that I use it for is coloring artwork that I create in Adobe Fresco, but you can create this art in Illustrator using the blob brush. As you can see, I have this really thick line art. And if I look at this in outline mode, you can see that it's got uh, filled shapes here. So these are uh, just shapes that are the shape of a brush stroke, basically. And this is what you get when you work with the blob brush. Um, but as you can see here, these are not merged. There's, they're all separate shapes. Every time I picked up my pen, um, I got a new brush stroke. And this is something that happens if you're working in fresco with the fresco vector brush. And so here I've taken that fresco art and I've brought it into Adobe Illustrator. And now I'm going to do something with it by coloring it in live paint. So I have a copy, not working on the original. It's always good to do that because live paint, once you expand it, will will edit your art uh, somewhat. All right, so I've selected this artwork, working on a copy, and I'm gonna get the live paint bucket, which is right underneath the shape builder tool in the toolbar. And you have to use the advanced toolbar to find this. All right, so live paint bucket. First thing you do is you just click on the art and that turns it into a live paint group, which we can see if we look in the upper left-hand corner, it says live paint. So this is a special kind of group. Let me switch to my black arrow here and select it. And you can see it's got bounding box handles and I can scale and move this just like I can with any other bounding box in Illustrator, but it has these little sparkles here in the handles. And so that's how you know that this is special. This is a live paint group, live paint group. All right, so now I'll grab that live paint bucket again, and I can use this almost like stained glass, you know, filling these regions with paint. So I'm opening up in here my swatches panel. I just wanna click on the first swatch. And if you can see this little cursor here for the paint bucket, if I uh, use the arrow keys on my keyboard, I can page through all the swatches in my swatches panel, and you can see the selected swatch changing um, there in the swatches panel, as I tap on the arrow key left and right, you can go down if you're working with color groups as well. All right, so let me go ahead and get to a color. How about this blue here? When it's in the center, that means it's active and you can just start clicking to add this to, you know, filling the regions in between the paths here. Now, right now, because this art has a lot of anchor points in it and it's selected with the live paint bucket, I'm just seeing every anchor point. It's a little distracting. So I'm gonna use the shortcut Command or Control H to hide edges and that way I can see my art as I'm working on it here. So that way I can just kinda work like that. Now, if you wanna know where that command is, it's under the View menu and here it is show edges. So when you want to turn it back on, use that same command, command or control H, turns it off and on. All right, so I'll go right here and page through, pick some more colors here like that. And I'm just going to work fast here, but it's just so, so much fun. I love how this works. I'm going to go get a green color here for that stem. I'll have some green selected. I'll go ahead and click on these other regions. You can see how they highlight as I'm working here. And there's some pink. All right, and I'll put a center on this flower. Okay, so we got a long ways to go here. I have a lot more coloring to do and oh, uh, before I expand this, one more thing, you know, because I'm working with uh, live paint and these are blob brush strokes, you can see that because they weren't merged, that each individual, you know, every time there's a path intersection, you have a region here. So in the original art, you know, that whole round flower was one stroke and each of these spokes here was also one stroke, but here in live paint, because there are intersections there, there is, you know, region difference there uh, that you can use that to your creative advantage if you like. So I like that. 
You can also work with strokes in live paint. There are some limitations. Um, but anyway, that's a little bit about how it works. All right, so now that we've done some work on this art, let's go ahead and take the next step and expand it and see what we have. So if I move a copy, I'm just holding the Option or Alt key to make a copy of this. We can see it's still a live paint group. It says live paint in the upper left corner. And so now I want to expand it. And I can see the expand button is right here on the top control bar. So I can just hit that and expand this and it will no longer be a live paint group. But before I do that, I love to show you where these things live in the menu. So let's go to the object menu and right down here to live paint and uh, I can choose release. That's going to just send us back to the beginning, I believe. Let's try that. Yeah, takes away all that color and basically just gets us back to our original line art. I don't want that. Um, but let's see, live paint, expand. That command is right down here as well. So you can always find commands for live paint here under the object menu or you can just use this expand button right up here on the top control panel when you have a live paint group selected. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that button. And what we have now, if we look in the upper left, it's a group. So I'm going to ungroup it. And now, like for instance, let's just take this one flower here. I'm going to have to unselect. Let's see. You know what? I still have Commander Control H enabled, so it's hard to see what's selected. So I just went and did another Commander Control H. Now I'm going to get my lasso tool, shortcut is Q, so I can kind of make an irregular selection and just pull this away from the group so I can see it individually and just show you what's going on here. What, what do we have? So what we have is, remember all those strokes are, you know, individual regions. And so this art is a little bit more, you know, apart than it was to begin with. So it's important to just kind of know that for any future editing. You can see everywhere one of those strokes overlapped this stroke here, we have, you know, kind of like cutouts there. So live paint is kind of a, it's a cousin to the, the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder. It's actually dividing things here. And you may not want that. So here's a quick way to fix that once you've expanded your art and you want to be able to work with it. If you just take all of this here, we can use the Pathfinder um, and uh, fix this. So if I go into the Properties panel, uh, we're going to use something on the second row of the Properties panel, I mean, of, of the Pathfinder panel here, and that is Merge. So what Merge does is it's like Unite in that it unites the shapes that are adjacent together. Um, but in the case of merge, it does it by color. So that means that all of the black areas in this art will merge into one shape and uh, the green, the pink, and so on. So let's go ahead and tap on merge. And now we have a group that happens when you're using the Pathfinder. So I'm going to Command Shift G to ungroup it. And now, you know, this art here makes a little bit more sense. We have all of our line art as one object and then we have all of these little shapes inside of it here that are individual shapes as well so that's a little demonstration of live paint there's a lot more you can do with it so maybe i'll show you that in a future tutorial uh, if you like go ahead and subscribe so you can get all of my tutorials when they first come out and you can look at my website lauracoilcreative.com for more tips and courses on Adobe Illustrator. Thank you for watching and be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you want to learn about Illustrator or Illustrator on the iPad. All right, thanks for watching.